We live. <laughs> Body, it is Dr. Latasia Jones, founder of Stemming Wild Black, CEO of Hey Dr. Tay LLC, and so many other things. Today, we are coming to you with a Black history story or two in reference to some people that they don't usually talk to us about. And as we started to think on this topic of why these people aren't brought up, we realized that they knew what they these people did in history, we would be empowered and emboldened enough to make more changes and create more revolutions than they probably could handle. Today with me, we have Mr. Joseph Ward, who is the co-founder and host of Freedom Train Network podcast, the founder of On the Shoulders of Giants, an author, historian, and community health educator. Mr. Ward? Hey, 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 everybody, how you doing? Like she say, found up on the shoulders of giants, straight out of Tallahassee, Florida, Lake Bradford, Roberts Avenue. Yes, I said my street name. Yes, I did. Um, happy to be here to talk black history. Um, I'm a historian. I've been studying black history intensively since 2003. Um, we are here to give stories about women or people who inspired us and spe specifically today women who inspired us. So um, I'm excited about giving this. I got a sense of humor. So I'm gonna bring that too. I'm gonna bring some of this information and just give y'all a disclaimer. I got my notes all around here. So if you see me looking yeah. off a bit, got my notes, but we're ready to get it in and have some fun and talk some history. Absolutely. Yeah, that's how you're Thank supposed you, to Mr. do a warrior scholar. Yes, sir. Right, right. And we, we only want the facts, right? So the more notes you have, the better. We can't keep it. Hey. It's too much right. to have done. For, sure. for that, Mr. Ward. We also have Ms. Dr. Atun Bookman, who is a hey. passionate farmer, plant-based healer, a researcher, acupuncturist, yogi, and he's also one of the Stemming Wild Black hosts. Nah, Shay, I appreciate that family. I uh, love and enjoy and honor the respect of being here and present today so that we could big up ourselves. You know, we're looking at all of those mothers and fathers that have come before us. So we come in the name of those whom have come before us. We come in the name of those whom will come after us. We are the indigenous black Aboriginal African people whom have an undying and indomitable spirit. And we're going to share a little bit about some of those warrior mothers today uh, in a oh, very yeah. proud way, in a very unapologetic way, because we are for her that indigenous black Aboriginal African mother. Now, Shay. Absolutely, absolutely. So just to give a little recap on why our purpose of being here today, we like we said, we want to share some of those stories and history that builds and empowers those who are of the Black diaspora. And we're not just going to be talking about those historians from the United States of America. These wonderful men here are going to take us all over the world and they're going to show how we're all connected. And a lot of the stories have similar a basis or foundation, just a different person. And once again, it goes to the question, why didn't we hear about these individuals? There has to be a strategic reason as to why these people were held from us in education in our school systems. But we're going to bring you the education here. So why not? Why not, right? Now it is right. time, no better time than now. So we're going to start off with a presentation to provide a little bit of an understanding. And I'm gonna ask as many questions as I can because a lot of these individuals that they're gonna present, it's gonna be the first time that I'm gonna see them. So hopefully as an audience member, we can relate in a lot of ways and learn together. Yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. So I guess that's her uh, way of saying it's my turn first. So um, yes. <laughs> now we do wanna give some basis to this. Okay, so we had conversations about being able to give information about heroes of the African diaspora who we normally don't learn about. Mm -hmm. That's my lane. That's mm -hmm. that's what I love doing. That's what I do mm -hmm. on a regular basis. And we, we want to start off with six people. So we're going to give you six people. So this is the first in the series, giving you six people. That's we're starting it. off with, with two today. And I'm excited the, the way we're starting. Look, we, look, we're starting with two great people today and as dr jones mentioned um these two people have similar stories these two women have similar stories and what's so cool about how what we're doing is we have different ways of telling our stories and you're going to get these stories of these two women who just to me like did some awesome incredible things and we we're not worrying about 
we're not we're no longer going to worry about why we didn't learn about it we're going to concentrate mm -hmm. on all right now we got the means to learn about it so mm -hmm. let's learn about it so mm -hmm. the, the woman i'm bringing to you all is one of my favorites i first learned about her um listening to a lecture by one of my favorite historians dr john henry clark Ooh, right clark. hey and he he talked yeah. about he talked about this bad sister from ghana mm -hmm. named yasantewa <laughs> right and if you don't know about yasantewa man sit back put your uh put your seat belt on and let's get into it so we got a got a powerpoint that i'm gonna give you all okay we're gonna check out this power oh shoot did i yeah, let me add it okay we got this powerpoint I'm that, you brother, to, to the audience for sure let this be uh the spark uh for yes. you let this be the ignition or the igniter for you let this uh spark your flame for the love and passion of our people to do the research to go and find out more to call their name, to say their name, to give thanks for who they are, uh, to put their pictures around you, uh, to see them, um, put them in your homes and in your heart, in your children, mm -hmm. so that you can start to channel the energy of these uh, warriors and, and exemplary ones. And I don't think there's any way around that. As soon as you two mentioned the people you were going to go over, the first thing I did was some research. So okay. if there's any way anybody is not going, especially after the presentation, right? I didn't even get all this. And I already wanted to look into yeah. it, hearing the words okay. that you two were sharing in reference to the story. So. I mean, I mean, see, the thing is, we have it, we have a a good position that we're in now that we have access to information. Right. Like, right. We literally walk, we walk around with a device in our pocket that can give us access to all the information that we want. The true story. So let's use it. So let's true use story. that. Let's Because that's what I ain't got no excuse on it. Hey, our ancestors yeah. used what they had to get what they Come on. Right. So yeah, let's go. It, all right. So Queen Mother Nana Ya Asantewa. And as yeah, you can yeah. see on the screen, she's the leader yeah. of the Asante Rebellion. And she's actually considered to be the last woman to lead a major rebellion against European forces, right? Hmm. So um, she she grew up in the Ijishu Jalbin Municipal District of Ghana. I probably didn't say that right, but I said the best I can. The right, Ijishu Jalbin Municipal District in Ghana. Uh, that's where she that's where she was born. And she was of the Asante people. And if you know anything about the Asante people of Ghana, they have a tradition uh, as far as their rulers and their kings that kind of connects them to God. Because the king is called the Asante Hini, and they have something called the golden stool. Now, to tell the story, I have to tell the story of Osi Tutu the first, mm -hmm. one of the first uh well the, one basically like the first kingdom of the asante and so osi tutu became the king of the asante in 1680 and he succeeded his uncle who is obiri yeboa um so tutu along with his priests okomfo and noko they prepared to carry out their plans to unify the asante so um the asante area was dominated by the Denkira people at the time. And so the uh, the Asante was looking to unify their kingdom and solidify their hold on the area of Ghana. So before Tutu made his move against the Denkira, he united the other Asante clans and he was named the Asante Hini or the king of the Asante people. And he was able to use that to unite the remainder of the Asante kingdom uh, as, as, he, as he was the Asante Hini. And one of the things about the Asante Hini that makes them special and that goes into the lore of the Asante is the golden stool. And the golden stool is said to have come from heaven to come down to be able to um, be a part of the, the journey of Ose Tutu the first and every Asante Hini that came after Ose Tutu. So there is um, a a strong godlike connection that the Asante people have with that golden stool and the Asante Hini. So come back to Ya Asantewa, you got the British. The British 
British colonialism is going on in uh, Ghana at the time. And so I'll bring you up to around the year of 1900. Around the year of 1900, um, and you can see on the screen, you can see the a map of the area where the Asante was. And if you can see toward the bottom, you can see where the Asante region was. But the British, the British were occupying this land and they were in this space the whole time. So you got all these different tribes trying to vibe, they vying for power while the British himself is vying for power. So um, one of the things that sparked this Asante rebellion was in 1896, Yasante was grandson, he was exiled by the British. So King Priam the first, they was exiled by the British. And so one of the things that I will hit on later is the tactics that the British or a lot of our enemies use when they are trying to weaken the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I always caution people because I've, I've came across many, 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 many stories. I always caution people when you're dealing with group, a group of people who you look at as a terrorist group or a group who can harm you. You want to be careful. You know how they say you don't negotiate with terrorists. Right. Mm -hmm. right. But that's one of the things that I, I can see our people really didn't learn too much because um, the, the negotiation with terrorists have continued. But in this mm -hmm. point, at this time, these lessons were still being learned. So the British used the tactic to take the king to this disable the kingdom by, you know, chopping up the head and the body of the snake will fall. And with the king being exiled, they looted the lands and they just ravaged the people. And one of the biggest violations that they made is they stole the golden stool. Mm -hmm. Right. So looking at the map, this is the, the area that, the, that the, the Ghanaian people, they are occupying this area. But the British is trying to overthrow and overthrow this area right, for for the the colonialism because we know how they do they come in and they take all your stuff and here's another map uh, a closer look at some of the area that the Asante kingdom at, that it covers and th their capital is actually Kumasi that you can see on the screen so and here's another map just a a, a, a better explanation or a better view of the area that was used so, so are those are those cultural groups yeah, a lot of these were uh, split up. The areas were split up between the cultural groups and the groups who ran the areas. Because, you know, one thing we don't like to talk about when we talk about African history is in order for one kingdom or one area to expand, you had to conquer another or mm -hmm. join forces mm -hmm. with another. So tribalism is one thing that was going on in this time. True tribalism. So, yes, to answer your question, yes, these were different areas that were occupied by cultural groups. And just for clarification, the capital of Kumasi is for the Asante, um, not necessarily for Ghana altogether. Right, 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 right. And so the king is kidnapped or exiled. The golden stool is stolen. So here's a, a picture of what the Asante Henny would look like sitting on the throne next to the golden stool. And the two pictures that flank it on the right, those are the golden stools. And so Ooh. this is sacred stuff, sacred ground, sacred items that this cultural group has. So imagine imagine uh, Russia coming and stealing the Statue of Liberty or Russia coming in and desecrating the Capitol buildings and all these different things. So Americans would get pissed. To, to make it relevant to to, to say the least the man right. would drop right. bombs and right go exactly full out warfare mode yeah exactly yeah. but I want to say it like that for the relevance so people can wrap their mm -hmm. mind around what actually happened so imagine whatever whatever is sacred to you somebody mm -hmm. desecrating the, your sacred things but that's even, what the British did I, I think that the importance was a little bit heavier for the golden stool because oh it, yes yes it was one of those things was bringing the people together as well. So I know well, yes. the example is kind of, I, I feel like it'll be a little dampened down compared to this because if they take this statue of liberty, we're not going to be completely divided. Well, uh, yeah. I'm well, just yeah. saying, I no, just yeah, wanted yeah, to yeah. make sure the context yeah, I, I, the It's story. absolutely fair that you make uh, some emphasis on that point because anything that we do, we do so in a very 
holistic right. format. And we right. ain't missing anything when we say holistic. We talking about having our mental, emotional, physical, spiritual, right. all of the aspects of who we are in human being. Uh, right. We envelop all of it into our principles and our morality is uh, intertwined into that. How we mm -hmm. are uh, judging and weighing things, how we consider uh, what is factual and what is not, what is true and what is not. And so when we're talking about this stool, it's just, it's not just a stool. It's not just a golden right. stool. They translate right. it and calling it that, but we not looking at it right. as if it's just something. We not even sitting on it, and you call it a stool. Right. Right. And see, right. And see that's that's why that's why I had to give you the story of OC right. so you can see the relevance of the stool. Mm -hmm. But you know, like I said, just just for just to connect people's minds to something that America cherishes. Understand the cultural differences. America don't cherish. The Statue of Liberty, the same way the Golden Stool is right. cherished by the Ashanti, but just for relevance to to people. Okay. So, so, uh, sure. so now, now we're at a point to where, yeah, oh, the sure. British, yeah. right? And so that's powerful, right there. That picture, that's powerful because we beautiful. see, a, we see, yes. we see a, a woman who's beautiful yet powerful at the same time because she's Strong. a leader, mm -hmm. and so. We're at this point and the Ashanti people, they have to make a, a decision. Are we going to go to war against the British or we're we just going to sit around and let this happen? And so when y'all is doing her assessment of everything that's going on, she notices that a lot of the men, and here's another picture. This is a statue of her, but she's, and I want to get to this real quick, not go back to the statue, but she noticed that the men were afraid to fight the British. Now you've had these you had these foreigners come in and, and straight disrespect everything you got going on. And in the warrior fashion of the Ashanti, we really just gonna sit around and not do anything. And so this is the speech on the screen. This is the speech, and I got to say it. Come on, this man. is the speech that y'all gave to the men that led them to say, All right, we got to get up and go to battle. So she's looking around. This 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 woman is looking at these men and she says, now I have seen that some of you fear to go forward to fight for our king. If it were in the brave days of Osi Tutu, Okumfo and, no and Koye and Opokuware, chiefs would not sit down to see their king taken away without firing a shot. No white man could have dared to speak to chief to the chief of the Asante in the way the governor spoke to you chiefs this morning. Is it true that the bravery that the bravery of the Ashanti is no more? I mm. cannot believe it. It cannot be. I must say this. If you, the men of Ashanti, will not go forward, then we will. We, the women, will. I shall call upon my fellow women. We will fight the white men. We will fight till the last of us falls in the battlefields. <laughs> look. Yeah. Look. So... Yeah. You look. You got to feel that. You got right. to feel that in your in your like being, that. right? Come on. Because think, because think about like how when they teach us European history, how they no prop up deal. all these battle speeches from these other folk. No we got deal. our own stuff, right? Come on. We got yeah, our own I'm stuff. So this is this is this is some 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 poetic stuff, man. Yes. Yeah, like this is that. this is real literature right here, and this is this is a real leader, the voice and the passion and the fire of a real leader who can see that I right, y'all may think the odds are stacked against us, and they may be. <laughs> and they but may guess be. what? We got to fight. We have right. to fight for our freedom. We have to redeem ourselves because this colonization ain't gonna go away. Mm -hmm. It's not gonna stop just yeah. because y'all over here scared. Y'all can try to make a deal with these fools if you want to, but look at what they already did to your king. They already took your king. They already disrespected your stool. They already disrespected you already. as a man. Disrespected already. your family, your land. Already. Everything about us is disrespected, and y'all want to just sit back and try to just let it blow over or try to be friends with these people? Nah, nah, we can't do that. We can't get yeah. down like that. So I right, yeah, forget y'all. Forget y'all. Us women, we're going in the battle. And if we lose, we lose. But we'd rather die on our feet than live on our knees. Come on. Right. Power. And so here we are. Now. Power. And don't forget right. she name dropped. She name dropped and then she called them some punks too. Right. Come on now. Right. Come on, stop. You, 
and you look in you, the brain days look this king and that one and that one would have done this and y'all sitting here looking like that and now looking like that <laughs> and and once again i already told you about the importance of oc2 to and ocom for and yeah. and and north k right mm -hmm. so we know the importance of, of, of these gentlemen. We know these gentlemen were strong warrior chiefs of the Ashanti and advisors of the Ashanti who helped the kingdom rise to the prominence that it was. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to forget all this. We're going to forget who we are because these fools showed up. I right, bet we're going in the war and we're going to handle it. Now, what was so great and, and what I always talk about with leadership is it's a term that we we used to use when we, when I played football is I would run through a wall for you. Mm -hmm. So they saw the fire and the passion and the leadership in her and they saw in her eyes and in her mannerisms that she was ready for anything. Y'all people talking about being about it today. She was ready for anything. She was about it, and, about it. Right. Mm -hmm. So they had no choice but to follow her into war. Mm -hmm. And they they went into war and they fought with the British they did lose but they fought for their freedom they fought for their respect they fought for their land they fought for their people and here's a, this people is not the exact never get it twisted is never a loss no. right when it's you not go down fighting for your liberty when it's you not. go down fighting for uh the freedom of yourself and your family when you go down in the name of what is correct and what is true and just it is you never, never lose. Loss. You never. You only lose when you decide to give up and not right. fight for your freedom. That's the only That's time right. you lose. Now, this is not an exact picture of y'all something well, but this is just a representation of Indeed. how regal she was and how much how respected yeah, she wow. was as a woman and, and a leader. And uh, she was a brilliant person, highly melanated, right? Mm -hmm. And she what full African features mm -hmm. and. I want I want women today, and not just women, but I want all of us black people, but I do want women today to study the women of the past. Mm -hmm. Not saying you have to be this exact person, but just being able to study the women of the past because I don't like today that, especially with black women, that black women are seen as, as weak in mm. some aspects from some people. And I and my thing is you don't that's because you don't know your history right like black women have never laid down for anybody black black women have complimented the black man and the black man has complimented the black women since the beginning of time come on man if you go back and you study this our is a spiritual divine systems, if you study our, our spiritual systems you can't have a god without a goddess come on right and the original trinity holy trinity was father mother child but you need both forces. You need that male and that female aspect. Yeah. But I want our women to understand how powerful their roots are and how powerful they are. So when we get to really learn and understand who we are and what we bring to this planet, we will start to vibrate higher. We will start to live better. We will start to uh, unify more. We start to do a lot of things better as a group. Because we're yeah. fighting, we're fighting the system of racism, mm -hmm. and racism is a team sport. Mm -hmm. So we got to get our team together, and that's the main thing. We have, we have the race spirit. First, Go ahead. I said, race first, baby. Yes, sir. We have the spirit and the blood and the memories of our ancestors and the power of our ancestors within us. It's mm -hmm. our job to learn how to go within and use that ancestral power to, to get what we need today to free ourselves from these from the from the throes of white supremacy and racism and do what we need to do for self because yeah, we are the, we are the heroes that we're waiting on yes that that i just really want to amplify that point again is that wherever you are uh, know that divinity is within you know that your spirituality is within you uh, you have to activate the spirit within yourself know who you are and let it come through. Uh, right. Get to know yourself. Sit with it. Uh, sit with your ancestors. Sit with their pictures. Know who they are. Um, sit in their memory so that you can activate that divinity which is already yes. within you. You have yes. the divine power, the divine authority to heal yourself. You are connected to the moon, the sun, the stars. 
You are connected to the earth and its elements, the weather. You are connected to this place. Uh, you are, again, indigenous and divine. So that, that is a very powerful message that, that you're coming with, Brother Ward. And, and, and I, I, and I, I, I just want to say, like, based on what you just said, a lot of people may, from the outside, those who have not tried or have is just starting maybe their path into learning more about themselves through mm -hmm. the and stuff. You may not understand what these two gentlemen are talking about, but the more you learn, the more you realize how connected you are to all of these things. Mm -hmm. right. I'm really encouraging you all to learn and educate yourselves a little bit more so you can fully digest what they're dropping on you now. Right. Right. Uh, one of one of our great historians, Dr. Renoko Rashidi, is always asking, how can we better connect our history mm -hmm. to what's going on today? How can we make it relevant to what's going on today? We're still today fighting the same system that Yasante was. Still. A lot of our other ancestors were fighting. Right. But a lot of our ancestors were very successful. Mm hmm. Come on, man. But for some reason, we don't want to do some of the things that they did to be successful. Also, mm -hmm. we're not learning from a lot of the a lot of the, the some of the defeats. We're not learning right. from them. Right. So what made this work and why didn't this work? Right. What did they do and what did these other people do? Right. Because it's, it's right there in our history. All we have to do is connect with each other and understand that, yes, you may be from another city another state another county another country another province whatever but we still all have the same enemy out that when it when it comes to racism they don't look at you and be like all right well i'm not gonna mess with you because you from over here and i ain't gonna mess with you because you from over here i'm not gonna mess with you because you a dude i'm not gonna mess with you because you a woman they see us all the same mm -hmm. and so to better protect ourselves and to better be able to improve our situation Let's look back at our ancestors and see how they built certain things. We're talking about people who flourished in the time of mass oppression. Right. They were flourishing. Come on, man. So how, do, how were these people able to flourish in this time of mass oppression? And we have a lot more freedoms and liberties today, and we, and we can't flourish the way they did because we're not learning from our past. That's why these people are relevant because they give us the keys to the future and the present. They give us hope. They give us that fire. They don't. They're not teaching us our history because if I teach the people who I'm oppressing their history, they will no longer allow me to. Yep. It's that's why they don't teach that to us. Real so talk. that's why it's imperative for us to learn. Mm -hmm. Imperative. Yeah. Real talk. So beautiful, come beautiful, beautiful segue. Right. Here, and yes, sir. About, uh, what it takes to succeed. It takes generations. It takes generations. It takes uh, indomitable spirit to succeed. It takes um, greatness and fortitude, uh, perseverance, these things that endure uh, whatever the conditions are over time, uh, these things that are hardened and warrior-like because mm -hmm. when you get punched or you take a hit you can't stop fighting just because you got hit right. you got to be able to keep fighting so right. what do you do next uh as we talk about who is on the screen Tantoya, uh, Agbaraya Toya, also known as Victoria Mantau uh, we have a woman whose archetype has been associated with the titles of healer uh, midwife uh, and of course, most notably, a warrior. Uh, mm -hmm. She was one who was exceptional when it comes to having those qualities of protecting yourself and others. Uh, she was highly ranked in the Dahomey's uh, Council of Women. Uh, she was born in the Dahomey Kingdom. So this is another woman uh, from a yes. very, very close to the same uh, natural environment that Yasantewa was in. Uh, and she is definitely at that time, and most likely in history, one of the fiercest women, uh, and not just women, but warriors mm -hmm. in in the world. Okay. Right. Right. And and my, and not to cut you off, but I want to remind people: uh, if the Dahomey warriors sound familiar to you, think about the the women who were the uh, the name escaped me. The women who were the guards for. The, T'Challa and the Black Panther. Mm. This is the origins of all of this. Another another Come bridge, on. another bridge to make this relevant. Um, the um, 
I, I can't remember the, what they called the, the women in the movie, but the two and and which and is just to, which is a good thing. Say it again. <laughs> I said which is a good thing because right. because you know in the women the the, the homemade Amazonian warriors yeah, the, the, the real life ones is much right. more important. <laughs> but yeah. but for her, but for 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 Toya to be a a a person with an elevated position within the the fun of the Dahomey means she was a, she 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 didn't play around and she was great at what she did. She was a great tactician and a great warrior because oh. you can't just be any person off the street and just be a, if you're not if you're not exceptional, you can't even be in the, in the group. Exceptional is right. the least I can say. Right. Uh, this is she was well respected, highly accomplished, and and again. Uh, just exemplary. This is a, this is what we talking about. If you see in the picture on the screen right now, you see a woman who's uh, who's got a gun in one hand and a machete in another, mm -hmm. with another woman behind her, another gun. You see a child there, full protection mode, full strength. There is no fear on this page here. Right. This is what we call the Shiro of the Haitian Revolution. She's also known as the mother of IT. Um, big up yourself, Mama Baina Bello, for uh, making sure that we had our story, for being mm -hmm. such an exemplary historian, making sure that these women in particular had the light shown on them, but that all of our uh, revolutionary heroes and sheroes of the time would be uh, honored and recognized. So I, I definitely big up Mama Baina. Uh, shout out to the Curvin Andre, who is the artist, the comics art. Uh, definitely came through on the representation of who we are. We appreciate that. We thank you for it. All right. So um, actually, what I'm gonna do is because I'm plugging that, we giving a big shout out. Y'all need to make sure you got this. This is a shame, shameless plug here. Shout out to Mama Baina for making sure that we got the text. You can put this on your bookshelf. Make sure your children have it. This is Shiro's of the Haitian Revolution. You can slide to Amazon and get it. But again, that's Mama Baina Bello and Curvin Andre, who is illustrating, all right? So yeah, big up yourself. It's such a beautiful yes, thing. Yes, yes. Such a beautiful thing. So many so many women are uh, counted in here, but we focusing on Tantoya today, all right? There you go. Um, and in her honor, because that's one of my master teachers, uh, that I'm thankful to have uh, been able to implant the wisdom. We're going to read her words, all right? So you can so, slide next slide. Before you do that, though, I did want to mention something, and maybe it's me as a woman. Could we go to that last picture again? Yeah, come on. Let me tell you what I'm, a, a lot of things that women talk about, especially when we have these big careers where we're creating this impact to a different level and so on. We talk about imbalance, right? Like, how am I going to balance raising a child, being a wife, you know, taking care of the house and so on and still be in my career and doing the things that I want to do that impact mm. whether it's outreach and so on. So I'm really admiring this photo because it encapsulates it all of those things. Mm. Right? Like it, it doesn't, she doesn't have to, nest, she don't, you know, she doesn't have to give up any of those things and she can right. be mm. as powerful in every role possible. And I think now the stigma is you have to give up some of those things in order to have that life, right? See, you can't have but, your husband and you can't have your child and also be on top of your career. Mm. But this picture is showing me something yeah. different. You're saying a word now. Dr. People Lester. that are out there looking at it maybe getting the same Look. thing. I wanted to make sure I said my opinion before we went past. You're saying a word now. Nah. You, right? yeah, you, Thank you. Look. Look, that's why a lot of our scholars keep saying if if you are constantly trying to imitate somebody else's culture, you're going to always be imbalanced. Mm -hmm. Come on. When you start to get more into your own cultural practices, black women ran kingdoms and households and armies at the same time. This mm -hmm. is nothing new. Mm -hmm. So if we get back to more of our own cultural practices, we'll have mm -hmm. more balance within our own communities and households. I say, I say, this is a cultural war. Big shout out to Nana Clark, who was speaking earlier uh, through Brother Ward. We know that it is our culture that we must protect. It, it, we know that it is the land that we must connect ourselves to so that we can practice our culture properly because our culture involves our environment. It involves mm -hmm. the resources that are within our environment. And when we are devoid of those things or we're put into 
um, suburban and urban prisons that do not allow us to access the resources of the environment, we start to express a culture yep. that is deviant and defunct from our natural way of expressing our culture. Yeah. So yeah, that's a, that's a key key recognition yeah. doc is that you can't you don't have to give up um, in order to live a certain lifestyle. What you got to do is pick up some more. You got to pick up some courage. You got to pick up some fortitude. You got to pick up some perseverance and be unapologetic about right. it. You right. You may have to be a chameleon at times. That's fine. Right. We're at war. You but may also, have to put on a mask at times. That's fine. We at war. We're at war. We're Absolutely. At war. Right. Be positioning yourself behind enemy lines mm -hmm. while you are engaging the enemy. But right. do but not feel like you are have are compromising your principles and your value set. Right. And, and and remember, too, all this was within a family in the communal unit as well. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about get back to coach. So good. So good. That was a that was a good thing you said, Latasia, because, yes, that was key. That was super powerful. Yeah, we appreciate that. All right. So, again, uh, let's talk about Toya. But I Toya was a well-respected, highly accomplished warrior for the empire of Dahomey in Africa. Uh, or Kebulan. Uh, she reached the military position of Gao or general in the all-female army under the then king of Dahomey, Dada Tegbesu, whose personal security she assured, right? Uh, around the year 1753, Toya's village was raided by euro Christian slavers, and after a remarkable fight, Toya was able to disarm and defeat a number of the pale men. She eventually, though, was captured into a net, uh, overpowered by their numbers, and brought to the slave ships that they docked at the shore, uh, awaiting their hard-fired cargo, right? Uh, after the long journey from Dahomey to Saint-Domingue, or Haiti, uh, Tantoya was ushered onto an auction block where she had to suffer a number of numer numerous uh, humiliations. She was purchased by a slaver, and soon after arriving on the plantation, let me give it a day or two, Toya escaped and headed straight into the mountains, right? She is uh, what we know as the maroon, right? The the one yeah. who does not tolerate slavery, does not yeah. tolerate what somebody is enforcing upon them. Uh, she had, it was, as the brother said earlier, she had a very well-respected position in the army. You just ain't nobody or you just somebody ain't somebody off the street being mm -hmm. the, assuring the personal security of the king of Dahomey, right? right. <laughs> so she is next to sovereignty and is sovereignty. She secures sovereignty. Uh, so she's not going to be someone who tolerates it imposed on her. She would have to accept it for herself in order for it to happen. Uh, so Toya escaping into the mountains was there for many days and many nights. And she attempted to recruit many other Maroons uh, to join her army, but she wasn't finding the right people. She didn't meet the right people. The, she wasn't able to gather the people who had the same warrior and indomitable spirit as she. And she started to feel a little more hopeless is the way that the story was also shared and told with me. She started to feel like there was no way that she was going to tolerate being in a place like this um, without the power of sovereignty. And so she was considering taking her life. And in order to do that, she knows, well, I must do so in the proper fashion. I must do so in uh, the, the spiritual way of my ancestors. And so she started to go around gathering herbs and preparing for her transition. And she came across a woman who was in the bush crying and making noise. But when she found this woman, she befriended her, who she was also a runaway. She was delivering a baby. Right. So Toya, being who she was, we already mentioned her skill set earlier, decided to help her. So she stopped doing what she was doing and helped her. And as she was, as she delivered the child, the mother, this new mother insisted to Toya to take possession of her newborn and teach him freedom. And Toya agreed to do so. So now she has something and someone to live for. Right. She no longer went with the decision that she was thinking of, this is not worthy of a life experience, and immediately made the decision that I will live in order for this child to know freedom. 
Right. This is a very powerful act that each and every one of us could do, whether you are with child or not with child. If you make the decision to be for liberty, truth, yeah. and justice, this is a very powerful act that you can make in your spirit, in your heart, and in your mind. Uh, and so as she made this decision, she decided, well, I can't take care of this baby in the mountains. I'd, I have to go back to the plantation to make sure that the child can learn effectively and I can train him effectively in the ways of Dahomey. So she taught him uh, the Yoruba language and art and science of war. She started to teach him how to use a knife first. And as he got older, how to use a, and wield a sword. Uh, she taught him how to have a take no prisoners approach to battle. OK, mm -hmm. she taught him how to be a to be who he is, mm -hmm. a man who is of indigenous Aboriginal African descent, who knows himself, who knows that he is not someone who is destined for enslavement. He is not someone who is destined to be oppressed. He is someone who is destined to be an emperor, a king, uh, a freedom warrior and fighter. Uh, and so, <clears throat> it, you know what? Uh, and the boy was going through life. Um, you can you can slide to the next slide real quick. Yeah, you That's you made cool. me you made me think about uh, the importance of um, what do they call them the um, rites of passage rites Ooh. of passage programs right yes sir because because that's basically what you're explaining that happened to this young man right. that she taught him she taught she took her culture and tradition yeah, the culture come on and and gave it to him in a way that no matter where he go in the world he gonna know who he is come on and have that strong sense of self and because we talk about self-esteem right mm -hmm. think about and and our community in the black community we have so many black people i know i went through it as a young man not having self-esteem because we're not really having a real sense of self trying to figure out who the hell i am in this mixed up world that we are right, right. but if you have a rites of passage program for boys and girls to know exactly who you are and pass the culture down from person to person we could turn out more people that's in better mental uh, uh, physical spaces emotional places psychological places and just overall my sense of self is higher and i love myself better because i know who the hell i am mm -hmm. so, so yeah that's that is that is very i would agree with you uh, and then we also must think about the systems that we allow them to go into following mm -hmm. those rites of passage so they don't end up in that predicament, like Dr. Jones was saying earlier, well, do I have to compromise something in order to right. live this life or to get mm -hmm. this dollar in order to pay my bills or to be uh, in a place that's nice, quote unquote, I have to compromise. No, 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 right. no. We need to have economic systems uh, we need to have communities yeah. that yeah. allow for people to preserve and practice their culture without compromise. Right. But but before we even get to that, I, I think we kind of skipped over a little part. She took herself back to the plantation. Yeah. Mm. To make sure she can yeah. instill these things. Come on. This boy. Think yeah. about that. Because we I know we saw. Well, a lot of people don't watch like Armageddon and you know, the roots and so on, any and every slave movie or read any and every slave story and look at the slave narratives. But I think the bravest acts are the ones where you're putting your life back on the line, but you're doing it because, you know, you're going to get more out of it. And she knew she was going to get more out of that. No, we talk about making the tough decisions. Right. <laughs> That's very right. tough. I don't know if I could have done that. But it, in today's terms, if we translate it into today, it would be you know, something like not giving up a particular position or yeah. just to still be nonviolent versus, you know, protesting with violence or, yeah. you know, a lot of these decisions go into how we strat we strategize now. And a lot of people go against each other when it comes to that. But to hear this woman and the other thing that I thought about when you started, Adam, you were saying how, you know, her prestige as a warrior mm -hmm. think about all of the bragging rights they got by enslaving a woman at that level. Think about that. And then she still went back because now she has this boy to look, to look after. That's crazy to me. That's so. Mm, yeah. But see, it's like you got to be built different. And that's why mm -hmm. we, you have you have a number of people who did this, but you don't have like an overwhelming number. This is not the majority of people because you got to be built different to do something like this. Because uh, to Harry Tubman, 
Madison Washington. Two mm. people that came to mind when you were saying that they both mm. decided to. Well, Madison Washington decided to re enslave himself to save Go his wife and, the belly of the and, beast. and ended up freeing a whole uh, ship full of people. Harriet Tubman said, All right, we got this. I'm free. Then we got this whole underground system. Shout out to William Steele. All mm -hmm. right. Since we got this whole system together, let's go get some more people. Everybody mm -hmm. ain't built for that. Nah. Nah, so, not at all. So shout out to the people. Shout out to all our ancestors, even the, the yeah. warriors we have today who are willing to do things like this in the modern sense because right. it's not for everybody. That's, That's right. It. Big up yourself, all indigenous revolutionary warriors. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big shout out. Aibo Bo. I wish not go. All right. So we're going to keep on fighting. Uh, so on the screen, we got we just wanted to show you a little bit of relevance. Uh, this is cartoons. OK, uh, these are not real images. Always know how to orient yourself. Right. Uh, when we're looking at France and Saint-Domingue or IET, uh, I'm trying to give this little triangulation because over there on the right side, you see the western coast of Africa just inside the uh, mm -hmm. southern part of that part is where you're going to be able to find the kingdom of Dahomey. So mm -hmm. imagine making these great distances. Some of us ain't even been to the other side of the state. Right. Whatever state you in. Some of us ain't even been that far. Some of us ain't even been uh, out in the neighborhood. Right. Real talk. So when you get transposed uh, uh, halfway across the world mm -hmm. into some of the most, not some of what is for a fact known as the most violent territory in the world at the time they were producing the most treacherous acts in IET at the time, okay? Uh, in this is a woman who knew herself enough to say, I am going to preserve these ways and fight for freedom my entire lifetime. Yeah. I'm not gonna give up, right? Yeah. Um, so yeah, next slide. Uh, so, so, this is this is very similar to what mm -hmm. we saw earlier, right? Right. Mm -hmm. We see the culture. This is another right. expression of our culture. In the background, you can see more of the, the masculine male warriors. And then in the foreground, uh, with respect to the two men on the end in the front, you can see the women warriors, right? We are paired together uh, and we are prepared together. We ready for all of that smoke, all right? This is the Dahomey I'm Amazonian uh, warriors. Next. Yep. Again, uh, give you give you a little color here, and you and two things uh, that are shining bright in my perspective right now is them drums. Yes, okay? yes. Remember the spirit of the drum. We are people of rhythm. We have to have rhythm in our life. The way that you do things, be harmonious, be rhythmic in how you practice, be rhythmic in your speech, be rhythmic in your um, patterns and the way that you bathe and the way that you speak so that you can continue to channel that greatness within you. And, and, and you will activate that divine spirit. Yeah, you know, you know, this made me when you say that it, it made me think about uh, growing up when I was when I would watch whether it's uh, documentaries or movies, or just hear African people talk about war, how integrated rhythm and music was into going to war. You have the you had a song to take you in the war. You have a song during war. You have a song post war. But Come on. rhythm, rhythm and music is infused into every aspect of That's life, right. and even and even going into thinking about the African people who were taken into uh, Brazil from Angola when they brought the mm. capoeira. And, you know, a lot of people think it developed in Brazil. Now, it developed in Angola and was taken to there. But going back to the overall point, though, music has been, and rhythm has been infused in every aspect of African people's lives. And we're not, and we are not too far removed because even right. like, those slaves who were in the cotton fields were singing and Look, beats and so on Look. to each other encouraged and to let them know when the next time we were going to try to escape was and what the Look. plans were and so on. So Amer America would not have music if it wasn't for what you just said. Big fact. Uh, let's go down, let's go down to the river. Let's go. Let's let's go down, let's go down to the river. Give y'all a little sum. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> but, but think about it. it. Even even now, when we do our protesting and so on, we use songs. When we do yep. right vigilance, we Chains. do songs. Mm -hmm. yeah, all of those things still incorporate songs. Why? 
y'all said it earlier, we're always at war. We are still we are people of rhythm. And, and I'm I'm saying like this, that's with the D, that's who we are, because that's keeping it culturally 100 percent real. Hallelujah. <laughs> I, I'm with you 1000. All right, slide to the next. So yeah. this was for you, brother. Uh, yes, sir. As, as we've seen, this is the link that we talking about. You see how they juxtapose it. Nothing ain't nothing new under the sun. Right. Ain't nothing new under right. the sun. Shout out to the drum looking like a sun right now. Mm -hmm. Ain't nothing new under the sun. We already know who we are, who we have been, and who we will be. We are the Wakandan fantasy. We've been that already. So do not look to uh, far outside of yourself again for things that you think you need or don't have yet. Right. You have it already. It is right. it is difficult to uh, fathom and know and, and activate when you don't know yourself. So you, your job is to know yourself, is to sit with yourself, is to research like a warrior would uh, right. about yourself and your people and your culture because it has been purposefully hidden from you. It has been purposefully kept from you so that you do not unlock that divinity that's within you. All right, right. big up yourself, all of those divinity. Uh, those divine ones, the highly melanated ones. That's what um this MD stands for, Melanin Defender. You're seeing. <laughs> All right. I hear that. So uh, Toya uh, and this boy, because we was talking about the boy that she was with, right? Mm -hmm. They were continuously separated by slavers, even though she went back and took them to the plantation. But life, the divine would always make sure that it would see fit that they would be brought back together. So throughout the lifetime as this boy, like you were saying, going through the rites of passage, she was granted the opportunity by those who came before us. The ancestors ensured that their paths continued to interweave and cross. Even though they were on the island in, in enslavement, they were able to be reunited time and time again so that she could continue passing on the culture and instruct this man, uh, this boy who would become man, okay? And that boy would grow up to be the first leader of independent IET. Now we will meet the military marvel, Jean-Jacques Dessayin. Mm -hmm. Next slide. So Jean-Jacques Dessayin is, archetypically we would call him Ogun. We would call yes, him yes. Steel, uh, yeah. fighting, the steel warrior, the one who yeah. makes it so. Uh, he ensured our independence. Jean-Jacques Dessayin is the one that made sure to uh, hammer in the nail uh, and, and put down those whom were oppressing us. He has this, oh, it's coming to me right now. So yeah, I got to share it. He has this statement that was given to me as he said, if ever you see, he's addressing the people, if ever you see me submit to the European or to the French, uh, Know that if you see me one time submit, 100 times, 100 times, I will commit treason upon them and make sure that I fight in our effort, right? Mm -hmm. So he, he was ensuring that the people know I am never going to turn my back on you, okay? Right, right. Yeah, big up. Now, so, it's, I, I, I love that you, that you incorporated Ogun in it because it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's taking it back. One of the, like I was saying earlier, one of the things that the Haitians used was their culture and religion. Mm -hmm. They dove deep into the voodoo. They dove deep into the Orishas and, and, and what they believed in, what the white people call animism, but their spiritual system. And that's one of the things that really helped them. Like, if you don't know who Ogun is, the Orisha Ogun, go study Ogun, one of the war gods of steel, of, of, of earth and of technology and manufacturing. You got, you, when you got issues, you summon Ogun, and Ogun gonna be there for you. That's right. That's right. So, so yeah, that's very powerful. Uh, again, our spirit is within us. For those who are unfamiliar with uh, what we say, Obeya, Voodoo, mm -hmm. uh, Santeria, these spiritual systems that are clearly African indigenous. Mm -hmm. we, we know a, that is not European. There's something right. else about that, right? When you see these spiritual systems, know that these systems are scientific. They're not yep. wishy-washy systems. They're not hoodoo voodoo scary systems. These are systems that one require 
protocol and practice. Right. They're not things that you just do halfway or to the side. These are things that, again, come from within. So in the case of IET, it was this amalgamation of all of those who were indigenous aboriginals, um, both on this island as well as the African continent, as well as from wherever else they were captured and brought to this space in. And we fostered together to then see the alignments in our uh, spiritual systems, because what we do know is about all indigenous people is that there is this recognition of the collective. There's this recognition of the divinity in all things, of the divinity of the earth, mm -hmm. of the water, the fire, the wind, uh, mm -hmm. the stars. We know that the elements are not just um, things that we can access, but they are elements that are reflections of the environment, of the energies that are in the space. So you can alchemize them or use them in a certain way, set them up in a certain way to bring uh, or to open certain spaces, open yep. doors, open yep. Uh, energies for spirits to come through, things of that yeah. nature. So this this is a high science that uh, people usually, that not people, that Europeans have done very hard to distract you from because when well, you they use tune with your spiritual self, which is highly scientific and refined over hundreds of years, generation after generation, thousands of years, we have been practicing spirituality. Mm -hmm. Hundreds of millions of years, we have been a spiritual people because we've been a spiritual people since the beginning of beginnings. We not here just yesterday. We've been right. here. So right. big shout out to that, to that type of energy, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So Jean-Jacques Desain, we talking about revolution now. Next side. So Tanto Ya is alive during this revolutionary warfare. She is alive and kicking. What Tanto Ya does is that she would be fighting side by side as a head in the military, of course, as it sees fit, because we already gave her descriptions and uh, accolade. And so she would create her own indigenous army and make sure that they fought on the side of revolution and made sure that there was no problems with what they had to conquer and take care of. Right. They were they were laying heads down. So this is a, some beautiful pictures of the truth, right? Uh, and why I say it's beautiful is not because I'm looking at the violence in it, but I'm looking at what it means. It means liberation. I could yes. not be here today if Once this type of action did not take place. Right. None of us would be living in, quote unquote, the United States of America at this time in the way it is. The Haitian uh, Aïtien revolution, right, is... When we the distinction between Haitian and IET and Aïtien is that that's hey, Haiti sound too much like hate me, right? Sound too much like I'm speaking hate. This is not the pronunciation that the indigenous ones yeah, they used I80. You know what I'm saying? So we do our best, even though we're still growing and developing, even though we've been removed from our culture, we've been growing around and learned uh English or European languages, it is our effort to say what we can say and learn as close as we can to the pronunciation of those who came before us so that we can channel the energy with even more preciseness right mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. so this revolutionary warfare was essential to our present day because of this revolution it changed the context of the entire world right we're not talking about something that just happened and nothing else from that Everything that's happening today is related to this event. OK, the, the, the um, a quote unquote United States of America, as we know it today, does not exist without this. Okay. Because yep. France owned the Louisiana Purchase and they yep. were uh, in their loss because they had a huge loss when they talking about losing the jewel of the Caribbean, Hispaniola. Uh, in the production that was happening on this island. It was the most profitable space in this side of the hemisphere. Hey, hey look, look. Speak like it, it was so profitable that it um, it made the Rothschild family wealthy mm. because mm. The, the Rothschilds, they using deception, they were telling people that Napoleon was winning. And so people started selling off their shares and stuff. Rothschild brought them for cheap. And then when they found out uh, Napoleon lost, the price went up and he got rich. He got filthy, filthy rich. That's how they was able to build their wealth from deception and things like that. But though 
the 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 Haitian Revolution, one of the main things about it is it it scared enslavers so damn much it's, it's getting so bad because they like oh man the whole world know that the 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 british the the french and, and uh spanish. yeah the british french and french and spanish Got three of the world's most too. powerful right by one group of people what they call an insignificant people. group of slave um degenerates up. Slap we, them around. We 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 gave them that business, right? Off of right. pure grit, determination, off of indomitable spirit, off of unyielding uh, uh, energy that was fueled by our culture, fueled by our culture of knowing ourselves enough to say we do not deserve this, right? Mm -mm. We don't so, deserve man. it. So we We're gotta look out and say and say, do we deserve this? Why exactly. Are we, this? we are too powerful of a group of people to deserve anything less than the best quality of life. Sovereignty. That's it. All right. So big up yourself. Jean-Jacques Dessayne would be uh, a, a military captain during the Revolutionary War. Uh, he would serve under Toussaint Louverture. He would be a model mm -hmm. exemplary general. Uh, one that made sure every mission that was given to him was sought through to its fruition uh, and made sure to do that and more. So he was excellent in his task as being um, chief general under Toussaint Louverture. Uh, when he was captured and uh, Toussaint Louverture was captured, when Toussaint mm -hmm. Louverture was captured, he put Desain in position to be the leader uh, of the revolution after him to be the highest general in the army of the revolution. Uh, and everyone saw fit because they understood his energy and that he was coming with that Ogun power that we know was necessary for what we were doing and experiencing. No one would refuse or oppose that. That is true, even right. the ones that sabotaged him later in his life. Right. Um, so after, like the brother said, the Spanish were defeated, the French, the, the English were defeated. And after the French were defeated and freedom was won, Desayim became the emperor of Haiti. OK. And in his becoming the emperor, he establishes the first the world's first empire in the Western hem hemisphere, mm -hmm. which is not just a republic. We're talking about he is the emperor. Haiti has a very rich history in which nobody really knows. They had the uh, I believe it was the third most powerful naval fleet at the time, definitely top five at the time. Uh, they were printing monies for different uh, countries that were going through revolutions because it ignited revolutionary struggles, uh, wars, yeah, and yes. especially throughout America, South America, Central and South America. Yep. So they were printing monies for these countries and um, supporting them, et cetera, throughout this experience. So there's a whole suppressed group of information that is tied to this uh, experience. Mm -hmm. um, but after becoming emperor, uh, Toya and he were reunited once again. So she comes back into contact with her protege and the reunion is short lived because Tantoya falls ill, right? Uh, and when she falls ill, Desain issued his best doctor saying, hey, you treat her like she's me. That's it. Make sure she's well. And even though they fell short, uh, she passes um but she passes after freedom is won which is so significant right this is a woman who vowed uh it is also said that when before she went to the plantation she took that baby desayin up back into the mountains to the, present him to the stars and said uh -huh. i have vowed to live so that you may see freedom i will teach you how to fight for freedom and gave that issue to him so that he knew, the stars knew, she knew, they were all held accountable that this was already won. This is a victory for us because we have already said it is so. So that right. manifestation power is 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 powerful, powerful, powerful. That's why the chain is a hundred million dollars, period. Straight up, straight period. up. Right, let's get to it. Cause once you get that first honey, you get another two, <laughs> all right? So, so we could go to the next slide. I think the next slide is also about revolution, yeah. So here, this is just one of the most powerful images uh, for me because I have heard of the stories that when the revolution was going on, the way they looked back at the island was that it was on fire. 
Mm-hmm. Whole island looked like it was on fire during the revolution. We're talking about 1791 to 1805. Uh, they are in constant battles, constant struggle for freedom and liberty. Uh, and make sure that we know it is not done because as Desain made sure to remind us, when they won and declared their independence, he said, make no mistake about it, we have only secured military independence. Right. There is much more to do. It is just military independence, which is a very significant component because when you have the force to say, I am not to be yours. I am not to come under your oppression. That's that's particular, right? So that military independence is powerful, uh, but it's not the only way that we need to be independent in order to foster sovereignty. Exactly. Okay? So, so when she falls ill and dies on June uh, 12, 1805, before she dies, he says, "This." I, he went. He was in a meeting, a powerful meeting, when they told him, and he said, "You know what? I got to go." So when he went. He said, this woman gave me my first bath, I will give her her last. And so he was able to bathe uh, Tantoya before she transitioned. And he gave her the most dignified state funeral in the history of the free black empire, um, which is which is just another beautiful part to the story is that this thing comes full circle. We understand our life cycle because all of us are going to go through this born uh, birth and death cycle. All of us are going to go through this uh, age and stage cycle. So what you do in different generations, uh, what you do with your lifetime uh, is dependent on how you practice and apply your experiences in your life. Okay. Right. Next slide. All right. So just a, just another big shout out to Jean-Jacques Desailles. This is the painting that few may have seen, uh, but this is a depiction of Rochambeau having to kneel down to Jean-Jacques Dessayne. Rochambeau is supposed to be considered one of the most vile Frenchmen to have lived. He mm-hmm. is uh, absolutely disgusting. Uh, he, if you look on the left, you see a family under attack by dogs, okay? Um, he was responsible for ordering hundreds of dogs from Cuba and brought them to the island of IT to help commit genocide because one of the strategies of the French was just to have commit genocide, mm-hmm. which is uh, nothing new. They have no new strategies in their book. But he tried to just commit genocide of the people and it wasn't going well for him, but he tried. And one of the ways he did was bring dogs. Uh, they would do public displays of dogs eating people alive. Um, burning people alive, um, cutting off people's hands, hanging children, all kind of all kind of sick, nasty stuff. But Jean-Jacques Desailles put an end to that. OK, big up next. So Agbaraya Toya is also known as the mother of Haiti. OK, we don her this wonderful title because, again, uh, her diligence and commitment to liberty, especially in the training of Jean-Jacques Desailles. Uh, and next, this should be the last slide. This again is a picture of our beautiful mother, our historian, Baina Bello, uh, who was one of my first teachers and taught me of uh, the beautiful warrior, intelligent healer, uh, Mama Tantoya. All right, Agbaraya. So thank you, thank you, thank you for your teachings. Uh, thank y'all for this quick time being able to share uh, such such powerful women with y'all. Yes, sir. Yeah. All right. Let's bring this back to us. Absolutely. So I wanted to make sure we took a minute to just kind of reflect, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you both first for providing, you know, some pictures of the story. I always believe in making sure we educate people in multiple ways because not everybody gets it one way, right? Um, and then we're encouraging others by making sure we're highlighting the biggest parts of the story or the, the true full parts of the story, shall I say, oh, yeah. for both of these sheroes. Um, so I wanted to kind of reflect and bring it back to its, you know, association with what's going on today just a little bit. Let's talk about, you know, some of those learning lessons that we connected. Now, I know we talked about a few of them already, um, one of which I didn't get to mention early because I didn't want to stop you, Adam, in the midst of your um, presentation. 
but even just the how we prepare families now and our kids for tomorrow, right? Um, we talked about how Tante Toya like took the child back to the plantation, prepared, mm -hmm. got him ready, and now look, he became you know a revolutionary. Um, so in today's terms, when I think about that, I think about how we're still black still being pulled over by police officers and how we're being trained what to say, what not to say, the demeanor in which you do these things. These are things that people are thinking about when they have their kids into today's society, right? So just some more reflections if anything else in their stories came about and made you say, okay, it's making me, it's resonating in a different way. Y'all want to mention some of those. Well, even, even to what you're saying there, um, we're teaching, we're, we're teaching our children I feel like, in my opinion, teaching our children to fear mm. the opposition. That we're teaching our children that yes, they are superior because we're we're getting away from using the term white supremacy for a reason because they're not supreme. They've just been able to dominate us. Domination, but, white but domination. Some, but a lot of that, a lot of that, especially recently, has been our fault because we're we're teaching our children that we are inferior. And they are superior, which is not true. And if we look back at our heroes, look at these two women. These two women never saw themselves as inferior to, to white people, no matter how large the army was. Right. They never saw themselves as inferior. And we have to be careful about what we instill into our own selves and our children. Um, my brother had a chance to go to an African Senate school uh, when he left preschool, he went directly to African Senate School, uh, Miss Olabisi. Shout out to Miss Olabisi. And Big up yourself. being able to go to an African Senate School, we go back to what Malcolm X said. You got to be crazy to allow your oppressors to educate, educate you. Children. Right? Mm -hmm. So Tante Toya, she, she, she saw the opportunity. Yes, she went back into these places to use the resources, but she did the teaching. That's right. right. Yeah, uh, what part of the story with Yah Asante is she she had enough, so much influence in in the Ashanti kingdom that she was able to influence some of the people who was on the throne, but also had a chance to groom them. Remember, mm -hmm. the women are our first teachers. The women yeah. are the ones who are pat who literally pass the culture on from the chi uh, from the adults to the children. The first part of their life, Every, yeah. most of the stuff that they get, they get it from the mothers, mm -hmm. but. The mothers have to be in the healthy space and the fathers have to be oh, in the shit. healthy space. But the the village and the community have to be in a, in a good space. Oh, so what shit. we can learn from our ancestors is how important familyhood is, how mm. important communityhood is. We got to build families, people. We got to get a better sense of community, right? So we can better protect ourselves. If you build it, you must protect it. We are, we are very, our women are so vulnerable today because the men have been pushed aside. Mm -hmm. That's how that's how vulnerable our, our we're to the point to where our women and our children today are being treated by our enemies the same way that they would treat a man. Come on, man. But that's a that's a historical practice. He just talked about uh, Rochambeau sicking dogs on you. Mm -hmm. uh, if you go back and you look at the story of De La Casas and they're talking about mm -hmm. how they would string black women the up by their father. feet. From the from the trees and the pregnant woman and cut the baby out of her stomach and then stomp on the baby's head yeah. and, and disembowel her and watch her bleed to death and then burn her. They've been treating us like crap since the beginning. Mm -hmm. And when you're talking about like relationships with police and all these things, it's it's all we've been doing is being victimized. I found information that go back to the to about 1533 of how they've used whatever force of police force or whatever in place to keep us in check. All these things are uh, created to keep us in check because Absolutely. of women like this. You got somebody like Mumia Abu-Jamal in prison because they don't want people, they don't want us to, to really embrace our revolutionary cool. selves. Right. 
Right. So if we learn more, we have to learn about y'all, Santi. We, we have to learn about Tanya Latoya. We have to learn about our revolutionaries. And I did a video on my channel talking about why they don't teach us about our revolutionaries, because they don't want us to develop a revolutionary spirit about spirit. ourselves. Mm -hmm. And because being revolutionary is, is like you said earlier, it's not all about taking up arms. It's getting your mind right. It's getting your right. spirit right. It's getting right. your house right. It's what you're eating. If we're growing our own foods, come on, we can source Talk our own it, waters. We can produce our own things. Dr. Clark said, how are you going to really be a revolutionary? You can't even make your own drugs. Come on. Come on. So we got to start it's somewhere. Clear. That's, that's a, that's, I'm, I'm thankful that this is where our conversation is going because prior to us getting together, that's what we made sure was on our docket was how mm -hmm. do we make um, them relevant to today, right? They've Absolutely. already made themselves relevant today. How do we remind ourselves of how these principles that these women practice are relevant to us today? Because right. That is, it's clear. We have to activate those these archetypes. Like right. we said, uh, Tantoya is a healer, a midwife, uh, a, a, a warrior. Right. This is a woman who has a very particular skill set in the times of warfare that allows her to endure her entire lifetime. Right. We're not talking about a woman who lived 50, 40 years, 50 years. She lived her entire lifetime enough to see another child when she's a full grown adult to see another child live to his his full grown adulthood. Right. And yes, liberate the country that mm -hmm. she, she said he is supposed to liberate this country because he is supposed to do what she could not do for Dahomey. Right. right. This is the culture that this child was growing up with, mm -hmm. the charge that was put on him. We are giving our children very short uh, aims and dreams. We're telling them to succeed in European institutions. That ain't nothing for a child. Right, right. We done, we done did that already. Now what? Right. And even, even beyond that, and both of you mentioned two things that I want to make sure I speak out of, you know, how it resonates with me. Joseph, you said it doesn't necessarily mean that we have to raise arms in order to fight the fight. And then Adam, you came up behind us and remind us how, you know, um, uh, Toya had this midwifery or this, this ability to help and assist during childbirth. And yes. anybody that doesn't know right now, African-American women are suffering during childbirth. We are losing a lot of our mothers during the birthing of their kids because of a system that doesn't fully understand all the things that take place within a black woman during that time frame. Um, and it takes us back to saying again, you don't have to necessarily raise arms to help your people. Maybe become a little bit more understanding of those more natural things and the, the abilities that a black woman has, with right. how a black woman is made up in order to make sure she has a successful and healthy pregnancy and makes it out alive. That can create just as much of an impact as you know a lot of the other historians that I have out there. And is there, there's of course other creative ways in doing it as well. So I just wanted to make sure I mentioned yeah. Because Absolutely. Sometimes when we think about these, everybody's like protests and police brutality and how we get past being in the master slave and mentality. I'm, but there's so many other parts. See, that see, talk about. see, that's what happened when you not studied. That's mm -hmm. right. That's, that's what right. happened when you don't really understand what came before you and how it got down. Because look, right. a lot of these people, when they, they go straight to protest because it's been popularized and romanced. Uh -huh. Right. Because like you just talked about. Being able to reduce health disparities is revolutionary. Come on, brother. Shout, out, on, to, brother. shout out to all black women who are midwives out there. I know a couple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't remember everybody's name. A couple in there right now, so I'm going to just shout out all of them. All right. those who foster in natural birth, natural yes. birth. Yeah, big up yourself. Right. But, that's, but that's it's, what we do during the daytime. Um, we yeah. focus on uh, addressing the issue of maternal mental health in particular and pediatric behavioral health, mm -hmm. but that is intimately associated with uh, the mortality of our mother, right? right? Because just because a mother is uh, in a precarious position during the birth does not mean that that, for, that whole year afterwards, she's not in danger. That's usually when the complications occur, is right. after that mm -hmm. first week, not during mm -hmm. the birth, it's usually following the birth that she has a, a complication. And so, mm -hmm. It, that is why, because of the institutions that are caring for us, we have to identify ourselves as distinct. 
We are. We should. We should. We have to identify ourselves as distinct. You're not the same as everybody else. Not and it's okay that you're not. What it means is that people. your body has its own particular uh, biomineral balance. It has mm -hmm. its own particular culture, not just in the sense of uh, the social culture we were talking about earlier, but also in its cellular culture. The bugs and the beings and the cells, the, the trillions and billions of cells that are within your body, making up your stomach, your abdomen, uh, your brain, your heart, the organization of these cells, the uh, content, the cells that produce melanin within you, in your body, in the, the melanin you can't see. Right. You know, melanated within, okay? Mm -hmm. Everything that's happening in your body is happening in complete darkness, mm -hmm. and you're still highly melanated within that. So there is a, a serious uh, need for us to recognize that we're not just talking about um, this surface level. We, again, are going deep. You've got to know yourself, spelling hey. it -E -E -L -L Know hey. yourself in true and in full, and know that it is right. a spiritual self, right? Check this out. Check, Check this out. So... So from me, right, I, I'm going to say this and come at it from a perspective of we're from the hood. We're from low income, high disparity areas, right? And we're talking about revolutionary acts. All right, Atun, you're a medical doctor. Mm -hmm. What you doing being a medical doctor? Why? Because it's in your roots. It's in your DNA. Going back to even beyond M Hotel. But guess what? Where we come from, and we're taught that you don't exist. But what you were doing and how you were doing it is revolutionary. All right, right. Latasia, Latasia, you over here playing with stems and stuff, right? You the stem lady. You created a you created a whole platform that decided to display hundreds and hundreds of black people within STEM across the world. That's a revolutionary act, mm -hmm. right? Ain't no, I went to Pineview Elementary School. Bellevue Middle School, Ricketts High School, Florida Agricultural and Mechanical University. The last damn thing I thought about was STEM. The only STEM I knew was weed stems and the stem to come off the tree when you get your ass whooped by come your on, mom. Man. That's real. That's real. So them the only stems I, I knew about growing up. And to be honest, I'm learning more and more. The more me and you talk, the more I'm learning about the depth of STEM. Like even being friends with somebody like Marlon Napier, I'm just now oh, learning yeah, yeah. about how deep it goes with stem and and what it did with him and how he used it like um i have i have two friends that those were my windows through stem uh chimobi on one and fred sweet they were engineers to but to but to like i'm watching a different world on tv right now that was a revolutionary tv show a different world got black folk to say you know what not only can I go to college, but I can use my mind. Absolutely. This revolutionary is so, and remember, in, in warfare, the physical conflict is the last part. The physical on, conflict man. only comes when ain't nothing else work. And when nothing else come my nothing. So now we got, you got to, you got to put your hands up. You got, we got to catch this fade. Cause ain't yeah, bro, I got to make mention of that. Cause it's, it's real, real. Uh, as you say, I'm a medical doctor, right? right. So, uh, the brother has come to know himself as Atum Bukman. I've been given the name Adam O'Neill Baptiste, but when you come to know yourself as a man and you realize who you are and you start to connect with the spirit that's within you, uh, that spirit will know, will activate all of who you are. And so in full, Atum Alama Sir Adam Bukman, I stand before you as the child of the mothers and fathers that have come before me, most immediately, uh, Nancy and Godfrey. Uh, we give thanks to those uh, who come before me because I cannot exist without them. And so in that spirit, I recognize that it is essential for me to not compromise who I am. So right. even though you've gone through uh, academia, even though you've gone through uh, acculturation of a foreign culture, you can still harness that divine potential within you. You can still get intimate with yourself. You don't have to uh, only uh, use this foreign culture to identify with, but you are gonna have to do some uncomfortable work and recognize mm -hmm. what is foreign and what is not. What is the part of me that is me and what is the part of me that somebody planted inside of me that mm -hmm. is not indigenous to me, right. that is, part of the destruction of me and not a part of the growth and development of me. 
right? The true unfolding of who I am. So each one of us got to do that work. Uh, definitely anytime that y'all y'all want to consult, uh, advisement, we do all of that. Um, get at the brother. I'm here. I'm sure we put our contact details up. Oh, yeah. But, but we definitely have spaces open for that. Uh, there was one more topic. I know we're getting uh, close to the end here, but uh, something that the brother said earlier, and I think it's good to kind of roll out on this one because you said that at the time of Yah Santewad, the lessons were still being learned, mm -hmm. right? And that's why we could kind of give them a little pass of, okay, well, they might not have known what to do. Right now, the le we already done learned these lessons, family. <laughs> we already got too many examples. Straight up. What to do and what not to do. We done learned the lessons. <laughs> so please uh, continue to be exact about those lessons that have come through and to teach you, to give you wisdom and experience so mm -hmm. that you can apply it and not go down a path of death and destruction at an accelerated pace or slow death uh, un, un, unconscious, at an unconscious pace, right? Because a lot of us are just tuned into the regular program and saying, well, this is what I'm supposed to do. Let me buy my white picket fence, get my house, get my car, get my garage, get my, my little dog, my family, my, my nuclear home, and just live life. Right. This, we can't do that here. This, that's not the recipe. That's not the recipe until you get your own sovereign space and territory. So shout out to, to those who have never let it die. Uh, the, the unapologetic, indomitable, indigenous warrior spirits. Uh, we thank you for existing. We will continue to raise you up. We will continue to foster that spirit. We will make sure that it never dies because it can't. We are it. Straight up. Don't wait till they white folk bring the stuff to your doorstep. You better be ready. Tell them, man. It's real stuff here. Yeah. <laughs> it's real, real stuff. Because yeah, it says to say that you, you might not have to be armed. Somebody might not have to be armed. Somebody going to have to be armed, though. Eventually. But fight yeah, your fight. Fight your fight. We're all different parts of this body. Fight right. your fight and fight your fight to the fullest. You may not be the military person, but fight your fight. That's right. That's right. right. But, but right. technically, if you really define armed the way it's supposed to be defined. Come on. It depends on what you mean by arm. That could be with a stethoscope. Powerful. With a book. It could be with a gavel in a courtroom. So mm -hmm. it depends on how you're defining the word armed. Yes, we're all going to have to be right. armed eventually. Everything, everything becomes, teaching. when you're in war, everything becomes your weapon. Mm -hmm. Everything mm -hmm. becomes your tool. So if you've got this scarf and this is all you have, this can be the scarf you use to keep yourself warm when it's cold dropping at night. This could be the scarf you use to uh, take out somebody. This could be the scarf that you use to make sure that you wrap your wounds with. This could be the scarf that saves your life. This is a warrior's weapon. So understand how to use those tools that are in your environment. Be resourceful. Yes. All right. Yes. So, I'm going to go ahead and close this out. I'm going to say thank you to both of you. And we're going to have a lot more coming. Oh yeah, you're not tired of seeing us because they mentioned six people, but I'm pretty sure I'm being able to plug in some more people as we go. But you, uh, we continuing to amen. our Not Black History class, so we can talk about the people that they don't tell us about. And if all of us want to go around once again, I'm Dr. Latasia Jones. You can find me on everything as Hey Dr. Tay. If you want to go around and make sure you mention your social media handles, how people can get in touch with you, that'll be our way of closing out. For okay. boom boom, Dr. Bootmine, you can find me Bootmine MD on instagram we also have uh we're gonna have the site up the balance and .com is coming up soon that's a that's a beautiful space where you can get all of the services and products uh, listed on there all right so look out for that holla at me at bookman md that's b-o-u-k-m-a-n-m-d right bookman uh, md at gmail.com is the email there you go respect on the shoulders of giants facebook group and facebook page all you got to do is type in on the shoulders of giants. Instagram is on the shoulders one. And that's the numeral one on the shoulders one. YouTube, check out my YouTube channel. Easiest way is type in youtube.com backslash on the shoulders one. Um, website is on the shoulders one.com. 
Yeah. Email is on the shoulders one at gmail.com. See that consistency? Yeah. So on the shoulders yeah. one. Just type that in there. Yeah. Or and you can O-T-S-O-G, Amazon G, baby. There you go. Amazon, <laughs> Joseph War on the shoulders of giants. You get you some of these hoodies, t-shirts, O-T-S-O-G. books, G. online courses. And if you got a if you got an Android, okay. I got a free app. So okay. every time I put out a profile, I put out the information and quizzes. Okay, about bro, I'm gonna go that download that. that. Appreciate so, that. So and then, and it's on my website. Go check out the website and how. Yeah. To, no, if all else fails, just it. Google us. Shout out to those who came before us. You know, there what I'm saying respect. This this how this how Cam's supposed to be pulling off. I'm gonna make a shout out to you, Cam. Hey, you need to be. I like that shirt. I like that shirt. I like that shirt. Bam! 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 Keep going. You know, hey, I like yeah. that shirt because I had a I had a small conversation yeah. with Bob, with Baba Jane Smalls uh-huh. not too long ago, and uh-huh. I bet you if I show him that shirt because we he we talked briefly about Wade Nobles, uh, Doctor Wade Nobles and Doctor Ockbar because one of Doc that breaking the chains of psychological slavery. Mm. Get yeah. your mind right. That's one of the realest yeah. books ever. That's that community right. itself. <laughs> Hey, All look. right, guys, we're, we're going to close this off. Scholars. Straight up. We, hey, we, we getting in there. We getting in the group. We getting in the club. <laughs> They're going to try to get in here now. All right, everybody. All right, y'all. Tuning in, and we'll see you Good. next time. Yep. Yeah. Right, much love, y'all.